So we, we've come inside the property now, having seen that the electricity comes from the generating company to the meter, from the meter into the consumer unit, um, which you'll be able to see up on the wall in just a moment. Um, I'm going to ask Ned some questions about the consumer unit. Um, this particular consumer unit has, uh, you will see on the right hand side, uh, an RCD protector and on the left hand side some MCB um, fuses, for the want of a better word, or circuit breakers. Um, so if, if we pan up now to the uh, consumer unit itself, and I'll ask Ned uh, uh, the questions. Well, Ned, on the right hand side we can see the RCD. Yep, that one, yep. uh, yeah, yep. that's it. Um, can, can you explain the difference then between that RCD and the MCBs on the left hand yep. side? Basically what this does, RCD, a residual current device, it controls the electricity to all these individual circuit breakers. So if you turn it off, I you've see. got no electricity in your house. I see, yeah, yep. yeah. If there's a fault within your electricity system, it will trip. It will trip it, I see. So, that, off. so the word trip literally means that the, the, it will trip up. It will just trip The it circuit off. will trip up and it will turn itself off. It will turn, okay. turn off the power to the whole of the house. Okay. Right, so each individual circuit breaker has a current rating of 30, well nowadays it's 32 amps, 16 amps and 6 amps. Now 32 amps are used for high loads like your power, um, specific items like underfloor heating yeah. stuff like that. 6 amps would be for your lighting circuits, 16 amps for things like immersion heaters, boilers and stuff like that. Right, so it's a good idea to individually label each circuit yep. breaker so that you know which circuit. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you have your lights upstairs, yeah. lights downstairs, immersion heater, yeah. various sockets, okay. sockets cooker. So I, I understand that uh, there are certain things within the property, things like cookers or whatever, that must be on their own circuit protected by their own switch. What else do, uh, is, is, does that rule cover? Normally uh, things like immersion heaters. Yeah. It's a, always a good point to put your boiler, yeah. heating boiler on a separate circuit, as you say, cooker. Some people tend to put their uh, um, freezers on cir separate oh, right, circuits yeah. as well, yeah. so, they, so that's only individually controlled by that and it, you've always got a protection of it. Oh, right. um, that's basically it, and anything, any item that takes a large amount of power, like if you have a workshop, you can have a small welding machine in there, right. then you would have its own individual okay. circuit. And what about outside? Uh, anything that's uh, that's used outside. Anything. In, the, in this case, there's a pond pump. And yeah, all that. You could either have that on the individual, individual circuit, or you could have it off a ring circuit, as long as it's all RCD protected. Anything okay. that you use outdoors has to be RCD protected. Okay. Yeah. Have the regulations changed re with recently? Yeah. Since this board was installed, um, you now you would now have two of these. RCDs okay. and a main switch. Right. Now the main switch here again would control the whole ball. Okay. But these, if you had two of those, they would control individual circuits or groups of circuits right. within I the see. house. I so see. you don't so you wouldn't lose everything in one go, you'd only lose a section of your house. I see. So that's uh, kind of overcomes the problem of what they call nuisance tripping. That's then. the one. Every now and yeah. again yeah. things yeah. trip and it's just a nuisance. Yeah. So yeah. The, th what, what, the thing I find most commonly is the fact that if your light bulb blows, yeah. because basically when the light bulb blows it's a surge and it's a short circuit. Short circuit, yeah. And it will trip all your lights okay. and it will take all your power out. And that's a bit of a nuisance. And that is yeah. a new, that's yeah. a new, yeah. hence okay. nuisance stripping. So the new legislation is supposed yeah. to overcome that? Yeah. Does, does to that a work? a certain extent. Yeah, okay, <laughs> great. Um, yeah. Now in this particular, um, on this particular arrangement, um, the, the, the owner I know works on computers right. from home. Yep. Um, and they've had a surge protector yep. installed. Yep. Um, what does that do? Basically, so because the electricity coming into your house isn't always on a constant, if you say, a flat level. Yeah. It sort of jumps up and down depending on various physical yeah. problems within the generating. So it pops up and down, pops up and down. And what that does, it just takes out, it smooths it off. So you, all, all of a right. sudden your computer doesn't get say 260 volts into okay. it as opposed to the normal yeah. 230. Is that is that an easy installation to make? Yeah, it just basically goes from the consumer, uh, your fuse into that and then everything from that that's plugged into that, all your computers so on and so right. forth. Is in, so that again, yeah. that protects one, so one circuit? Yeah, in fact then there's a whole new sections of regulations that come out this year, all to do with surge protection. Oh right. Yeah, so okay. that's all, yeah, so you've actually um, 
quite well ahead there. Oh, great, that's great. Well, so we can tell them that they've done particularly well. Yeah. And, and for those that saw the camera shot on the right-hand side of the fuse board is the, uh, the doorbell. Yeah. Uh, we won't go into that too much. That but, makes uh, the thing go ding-dong. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a ding-dong machine. Okay, so let's go through to there um, and talk a little bit about um, uh, the individual, the, the two main circuits, which are obviously the, the lighting circuit and the... Uh, the power circuit yep. for the sockets. Yep. Okay, so sure. we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Yep. Okay. 